In the second lecture here, we are going to continue with our revision on complex stresses. We we'll use this example to discuss uh, how to come up with the stress element. Now, the example here says we have a solid rock and it has a radius of 75 centimeters sorry 0.75 centimeters or 7.5 millimeters it is subjected to the loading shown at point b now at point b we can see that we have a horizontal force 500 newtons in the y axis direction and also a vertical force of 800 newtons in the direction of minus z so if you get a question first of all check the axis if they give you the axis use the given axis as your reference if they don't give you this axis here it's just a diagram then create your own axis as reference Okay, so now in this question, point C is built in, so it's fixed, and they want you to determine the state of stress at point A. So we have point A here. Okay, so if you look carefully, point A is located on the surface, it is on the plane of XY, it's on the surface in the X direction right and the plane is z y okay vertical plane z y so the element there will be facing the surface will be facing direction of x so if we look at this question here now to find the stress element here first we need to determine what the stress element or this point experience so we need to know what are the loadings at this cross section here first all right now to do that we take a section at point a okay we take a section here now there's two ways doing it you can use the free body diagram of the end here the free end from point a right until point b or you can also use the back here, the back portion, which is AC. You can use either one to determine your uh, free body diagram. If you use point C, so you will have, sorry, um, not very good in drawing with this pad here. But you will have something like that, right? So that is point C. And over here, you can then determine... Uh, y, X, and also Z. Okay, you can determine what are the forces acting at that cross section. Right. So let's go to the next slide. Now, this slide shows that, sorry. <clears throat> this slide shows that, uh, sorry about that, it shows the free end from point A, so we have point A here, to point B. So if we take the free end here, you have to determine what are the reaction forces and moments acting on this cross section due to the applied loads so if we look here the applied load 500 newtons has a radius arm of 14 centimeters within using that radius arm it will be having a moment right a moment about z so this is z here vertical is z so it will apply a moment about z Therefore, the reaction on the cross-section will be opposite direction and that will be 500 times 14 here. Alright, that's the first 
action of this 500 newtons in the y direction. The other effect of this 500 newtons is the axial load acting on the cross section that is 500 newton in the minus y direction, right? So those are the two effects of these 500 newtons at point B. So we have point B here, right? And here is point A. Okay. So we have two. One is this countering moment here. And the other one is the axial load acting at point A. Okay, in the cross section. Then we go and take a look at this vertical force of 800 newtons acting on B, which is in the minus Z direction, right? So if you look carefully, 800 newtons, a perpendicular distance of 14 centimeters will give you a moment arm about this axis here. Sorry, uh, this axis Z, sorry. I'm mistaken. Now why can't I remove that? Sorry about that one. No, forget about that. So <clears throat> we have 800 newtons times 14 centimeters will give you a moment about the y axis. And that becomes torsion, right? So if you look from the y axis here, so this is y at the end here. If you look from y, this is counterclockwise, right? Therefore, at the cross section here, you have a clockwise reaction. A clockwise reaction of 800 newtons times 14 centimeters. Okay? So that's moment about the y-axis. The other effect of 800 newtons is with this moment arm of 10 centimeter. So this 800 newtons will also give you a moment if we look from x direction. So remember this is x direction, right? x-axis. If you look from x direction, this 800 newtons is giving a clockwise moment about x-axis of 800 times 10 centimeters. Therefore, at the cross section, we have a reaction, this reaction here, which is 800 times 10 centimeters. Okay, so we have this blue reaction here. Okay. And the other effect of this 800 newtons is a vertical force, right? Minus Z. Therefore, the reaction here is 800 newtons in the positive Z direction. So what do we have? We have a force here, which is shearing at this cross section. This is a shear force. We have axial load, 500 newtons. We have a torsional moment of 11,200 newton centimeters. We have a bending about the x axis of 8,000 newton centimeters. We have a bending about the z axis of 7,000 newton centimeters. So we have one, two, three moments, right? And two forces. So we have five components there that we have to take a look. So what are the effects of these five forces on the stress element at point A? Remember point A is somewhere here, right? It's on the center line, okay? In the x-axis, it's on the x-axis. Therefore, if you look carefully, now this 800 newtons, is shear and this point here is right at the neutral axis right so if we have a circle remember we have a circle then we have x axis here 
So here is x. Then we have, uh, let me see. That is z axis up there. And we are looking from y, right? Y is in the center here. So we are looking from the y axis. So if you take a look, 800 newtons is going in the z direction. Therefore, point A, this is point A here. Point A is at the neutral axis. So if you take this as the shear force, point A will experience the maximum shear stress. So what we have? We have tau is equal to V times Q over I T. Remember? Now this will be shear. So we have tau is equal to V Q over I T. Right? So it gives you the shear stress effect. If we take a look at uh, 500 newtons. 500 newtons is axial load. It gives you an average tensile stress, right? Therefore, at point A, it will experience an average tensile stress of P, which is 500 newtons, divided by A, which is the cross-sectional area of this circle there. Alright? Then, we take a look at this moment here, which is torsional. We have a torsion effect on that surface. Okay, so if we draw an element, a rectangle there, okay, for A, we draw an element at point A. So that is Y. Upwards is Z, right? And X is coming out of that stress element. Okay. So that is point A. Now the effect of distortion here, 11, uh, 11,200 Newton centimeters is going up, is going up, right? At the front here. So if this is A, on the left side, the shear is going upwards, right? That's the shear due to the torsion here. And this is giving you tau is equal to tr over j. Okay? Sorry, where's my t? That's t there. Okay? The tau times r over j. R is the radius, J is the polar second moment of area. And that gives you this tau here, which is tau due to torsion. Okay? So this is tau T. Right? Torsional stress. So on the left side here is upwards, therefore you have complementary on the other three surfaces. This is downwards here right downwards then you have here is to the left and here is to the right okay so that's all tau due to t so now we have one effect two effect three effect right due to this 500 remember it's in the y minus y direction so we have stress here and so we have another stress here and that is sigma due to 500 okay those two there we also have remember 800 is upwards so the shear stress 800 is upwards the shear stress is acting on the left side of the element. So if you have a stress element here, let's say we draw a box there, right? Sorry. We draw a box there. So it's on the left-hand side of the box. 
So it's in the same direction. Therefore, what we then have is plus tau, right? 800. Right? Sorry, this is going out of my screen. Tau 800 plus tau T. Okay? Tau due to uh, torsion. Now we are left with the other three. Sorry, the other two. This moment here, 7,000. And this moment here, which is 8,000. So now, if you look at this 8,000 here, this is a bending moment in the plane of YZ. Therefore, if you bend in the plane of YZ, in this plane here, right, YZ, this is Y coming out, and Z. If it bends in that plane, this here, point A, is on the neutral axis, right? So when it's on the neutral axis, it does not have any effect due to the bending, right? It's zero. So sigma bending due to this bending moment at point A is zero. So there's nothing there. Okay. However, this bending here, 7000, is in the plane of x, right? x, y. So it is this plane here, horizontal plane. If it bends in the horizontal plane about the z axis and is bending clockwise, if you look from the top, therefore point A is going to experience a tensile stress due to bending, and the point on the right here is going to experience a compressive bending stress, right? And so we know that this is the maximum bending stress for a circular cross section is tensile due to 7000 newton centimeters. Therefore, is tensile at point A, so we have plus sigma due to 7000. Okay, is bending stress. This is average normal stress. This is bending stress. M Y over I, right? Where M is 7000 Newton centimeters, so you can change the units to Newton meters or Newton millimeters is your choice. Okay, so that is how we come up with the stress element here. We've combined loadings due to these two external loads. So first step is to find the free body diagram as shown with all the relevant reaction forces acting on the cross-sectional area and then you find the effect of each one on the point of interest. In this case, is point A. Okay. So this here shows effect of each individual loading or reaction forces. So we have the normal force effect due to 500. So you have 2.83 megapascal. We have the shear stress due to the shear force 800 newtons okay it's 6.04 at point a we have the bending moment due to 8000 newton centimeter which is zero because it's at the neutral axis right we have a bending moment of 211.26 that's a bending stress due to bending moment of 7000 newton centimeters and we have a torsional moment at point a TR over J, remember? Due to this stock here, 11,200 Newton centimeters. So we have, a, we have a shear stress. So if you take on the left side, this is on the section of AC. So the direction will be opposite of this direction here. Sorry. will be opposite of the ones we discussed earlier. 
Therefore, at point A, if you combine all these five here, we see that we have an axial a normal stress, 2.83 plus 211. Okay. We have a shear. On the right face is downwards. On the left face is upwards. Similarly for the last one here. This one here. On the right face is downwards. On the left face is upwards. So did you just add them up because they have the same direction. Right? That's the calculation given for effect of shear force. Uh, then you have effect of bending of 8000 which is 0. And effect of bending of 7000 which is 211 mega pascal right then you have a torsional moment that gives you 169 now these individual calculations are all based on solid one everything you have learned in solid one right so those are what you have done in solid one those are the important things that you must have before we proceed to solid 2.